What's up guys, welcome back to another Motorball video. Now I've been doing loads of stuff at the bike lately and the most noticeable, probably, uh, is the LED headlight on the front. So when I've posted photos on Instagram recently of the bike, quite a few people have messaged me asking for a bit more info about how I did it. And so that's why I'm making this video today. As I see it, there's like two options really if you want to put an LED headlight onto the Street Twin. You could go down the route of getting the Motodemic, I think, headlight. Quite expensive, but it's built to fit the original Street Twin housing and brackets. That's probably the easiest plug and play option. The other is to get a universal seven inch headlight like the one I've got. I got that one off Amazon and it was much cheaper because it's just a universal fit. But the downside of that is it's like slightly too small for the original housing. So you're gonna have to buy a new housing, new headlight brackets, and then think of a way to mount the Speedo differently and also you might have to move the indicators if your headlight brackets sit low. So although it might seem like cheaper on the face of it to get the universal part, all those extra bits are gonna easily add up to the kind of same amount as a, as a sort of specific Street Twin LED headlight. But I never intended to actually fit an LED headlight to this bike. I had a kit from Back Motorcycles BAAK. It's a French company that make custom parts for Triumphs and Moto Guzzi's and stuff like that. Um, and they sell this headlight housing, headlight brackets as a kit with a speedo relocator that goes on the, on the fork mount there. And then also a bracket to move the rec reg, which I've made a video about already. And also a bracket to move the indicators onto the top of the radiator there, which I've also done. Let me show you that. So I thought I was getting quite good value for money with that kit in that it includes so much stuff that's gonna make the front end of the bike look quite different. And I especially like this headlight housing because it was a little bit less deep than the stock one. So it makes the front end look a little bit more like birch, a little bit more um, stocky. So that's why I went for that. But the fact that the headlight housing is like that much flatter. And what I didn't realize was that with the Street Twin, almost all of the connectors on the harness end in the headlight housing uh, and are all joined to the various you know, lights and, and up to the speedo and those kinds of things from there. And the ignition as well, that's quite a chunky connector. So the advice from back was to fit the Triumph original uh, sort of headlight um, optic and that meant that you could keep that little nice Triumph logo that's on those stalks in front of the bulb but when I did that and tried to fit everything back into that housing I just couldn't get it all in uh, it wouldn't go far in enough when you tried to put the optic in to actually put the screws in to hold it in place so I had a trip recently to Wales for the weekend I really really wanted to bike there but I'd done most of the work to fit this new kit, but that last part of just getting the headlights fit in, I couldn't do, and I didn't really want to take the top yoke off to get the headlight brackets off again, uh, to put all of the stock stuff back. So thinking quickly, I thought, perhaps an LED headlight optic will be flatter on the back. Um, so I just ordered one on Prime, it showed up the next day, and then I fitted it, and it, I, like, I'm really, really happy with how it looks. It was a bit of a kind of, fluke in a way because I never planned it out like that but I think it makes the front end of the bike look um, a bit more unique uh, when you build something custom you want it to look kind of different to the stock bike and I think this really helps to differentiate it a lot more than just the kind of um, standard headlight optic in a flatter housing if you are trying to decide though between you know a plug and play street twin specific LED headlight and then this one and if you're not mechanically confident I'd probably go down the route of the the kind of motodemic type one because literally you just you know take a couple of screws out to get the old optic out and then plug the new one in and then just put it back in and, and put those screws in whereas this was you know changing the whole front end of the bike and as I say you've got to get the bars off to get the top yoke off to you know remove some of the parts and then get the new brackets on so it's quite a lengthy process you need to leave plenty of time to do it carefully because you don't want to be rushing a job like that and also when you're putting everything back together you need to be talking a lot of these bolts back to spec so that you don't over tighten them and affect the steering but also if you you know if you haven't got things tight enough 
Um, you might get play in the steerer bearings and those kinds of things which will cause damage in the long run. So definitely a kind of, yeah, you know, it's not exactly like rebuilding a whole bike. I think if, you've, if you're confident you can do it, but um, you know, leave plenty of time to do it is what I would say. As I said, though, I'm really happy with how it makes it look a little bit more modern. And a big part of that is the uh, angel halo, as it's called, around the outside. That, unfortunately, you do have to splice onto the cable for the original side light, so there's no uh, universal connector there because Triumph have made their own specific connector. So that's one thing you have to splice together, or you could use like bullet connectors or something like that. And there's no earth for that halo light because everything on that LED unit is earth through the kind of main uh, bulb connection. But yeah, it looks great. I'm really happy with it. I'm not sure how well that's shown up on the camera, but it definitely adds a kind of like modern flavor to the front end. The only thing I don't like so much is that when it's off, that white plastic ring does look a little bit cheap and tacky. It'd be great if it was somehow blacked out, but I think the reason it's there is to try and give the LED something to illuminate to make it look like one constant ring. My only slight concern, and I'm probably not gonna get a chance to find out soon, is that there is a little bit of a gap around this um, headlight housing at the front to allow you to kind of adjust the, uh, the headlight beam left and right and I'm not sure how watertight that is and given all those connections are in there um, I'm slightly concerned about that but the weather's pretty good at the moment and I don't ride a lot in the wet it's just if I get caught sometime so maybe I'll look to seal that up somehow by perhaps putting some sealant on the back of it or something like that some silicon sealant around the back um, but I'll, I'll get to that soon. I haven't had that much chance as well to ride in the dark and really test out how bright it is. It's noticeably brighter than the stock one, um, but with it getting dark so late at the moment, I'm never out riding at you know half nine, ten o'clock. But what I'll do is I'll spin it round in the garage now with the lights off in here and just uh, switch it on and give you guys a kind of preview of how bright that is. I'm not sure that this is going to be a particularly um, representative test given how bright it is outside. But here is low beam, and then that's full beam. Doesn't look particularly bright probably on the camera, but it is notably brighter than the stock light. So perhaps when I get a chance, when it's um, properly dark, I'll take the GoPro out and show you what it's like on the street. So that's it for today, guys. Um, let me know what you think in the comments how you think it looks, uh, and if you've got any questions, as always, stick them in the comments as well, but otherwise, catch you soon.